7.39 here on Kiwi. Talking about looking around, how about we look into space with Dylan's story right now. Thanks very much to the Auckland Stardom Observatory. Dylan, good morning. Good morning. And uh, today, first, oh. first, you're very well, thanks. And today, uh, first up, we're chatting about uh, a, um, a, a black hole that's kind of like a hurricane. And, and last time, in fact, we were talking about black holes as well. So this is a bit of a continuation. Yeah, I thought I'd stay on the theme of black holes, and we actually talked about it last week with Sam too, when you were away gallivanting around somewhere. And, um, and, and my own black so, hole. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes, do go on. Um, yes, yeah, so this uh, this black hole has been discovered, which has um, very high speed winds coming off it. Now that might sort of seem incomprehensible if you're not familiar with what black holes do. So one of the reasons we know about black holes, because by by definition and, and as their name implies, we can't actually see them. So we can only detect the um, evidence that they're there from other things. And one of one of the main um, one of the main things that lets us see black holes is when they're in orbit around something else. So yeah. you you often find these binary pairs. I mean, a lot of stars you see are actually actually two stars, actually binary pairs. So you quite often get a black hole paired up with a star. And so you can see the effect that the black hole is having on the star mm. um, because the black hole is much more massive. Yeah. And it, it's, it's, it's smaller, so it's got its gravity all concentrated. So when, these, when there are these binary pairs, what happens is the black hole rips matter off the star. And so it, it kind of pulls stuff, gas, and in this case, they're calling it a wind. It pulls it off the star and, and, and sucks it into itself. So huh. we can see the, the telltale signature of that. So it doesn't it doesn't directly like pull a whole piece in. It's not so strong to pull a whole piece in. It just takes bits off at a time. Well, not bits off, but maybe more a, a sort of steady stream. Hmm. So um, that artistic interpretation you just had on the screen. Yeah. For those on on Skype on the internet. Um, it sort of it, it shows this this big round star within this sort of bit sort of being pulled off the size like I don't know what we compare it to like um like uh, a big dough bun with you know when you're pulling out some of the side oh yeah yeah that makes sense so it's, it's sort of this constant stream the star bulges in towards the black hole and a constant stream of matter comes out and gets sucked in a bit like a vacuum cleaner. Yeah, very much like a vacuum cleaner. A black hole is kind of like the ultimate vacuum. Hmm. So this has been so, this has been observed. This has been observed um, many times in the past. Yeah, this is one of the reasons we know about black holes. Uh, have confirmed their existence. The one that's uh, in the news at the moment, that's in astronomy news, is um, there's one that seems to be tearing matter off faster than we've ever seen before for its size. Hmm. So obviously the the more mass the black hole, the stronger the gravity it's got, so it pulls more stuff into it. Um, but this is a smaller black hole orbiting a sun-like star, so a star just like our sun, and it's ripping matter off much faster than ever seen before, up to about 35 million kilometres per hour, which is, even though it's only 3% the speed of light, it's still a very fast speed. So chances are, of course, because we're looking back in time when we see something like this that is so far away, chances are that black hole may have already gobbled up that sun. Uh, no, not really. The press release doesn't actually say how far away this binary pair is, but if we can see it like that, it would. I'd be surprised if it was more than a few thousand light years. And the massive star is, is is a lot longer than that before it's going to get all consumed by a black hole. Mm. So it takes a long, I mean, long we're time. We're, mm. it's not, yeah, we're, we'd, be ta- we'd be talking um, tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of years. Light years or just years? Uh, well, if we're talking about purely about time here, then years. Okay. Um, so that would, but that if you're we're transferring that, comparing that to distance. So if we were seeing something a few hundred thousand light years away, yeah, then then that could be true. It could be about to be fully consumed by now. Yeah. But of course, the further away we look, the the less definition we can see. Right. And this discovery is taken by the Chandra Space Telescope, which is an X-ray telescope 
in space. So it um, it records X-rays from things in space. Now we obviously we we can't have one of those on Earth because Earth's atmosphere absorbs X-rays. Yeah. So the only reason, only way we can take photos of space in, in X-ray, so to speak, is by having something out of Earth's atmosphere. Does it feel like um, discovery is accelerating at the moment? Discovery of things. Oh yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, definitely. Hmm. That with the bigger and bigger telescopes going in, and the more, the more range. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's it's astounding to think what the next decade will bring. Yeah. You know, if, if think of what the Hubble Space Telescope discovered, and which went up in, ooh, was it, 90, 95? Yeah. And it had this, um, I think it's about, about a three-meter dish, an optical telescope, and, and the amount of discoveries it's made are just, are just stunning. You know, you look at Hubble Space, uh, Hubble photos on the Internet, and they're just everywhere. It's discovered so many things. So the next generation space telescope is going up as planned for launch in 2015, the James Webb Space Telescope, and it's many times bigger than Hubble. Hmm. So if you, if you sort of apply what the, the discoveries Hubble made and magnify that by many times, that's what, um, that's what we're going to be discovering in the next decade or so. All right. Well, what can the average uh, me and you discover this weekend with the clear skies that we're hopefully expecting over New Zealand? Of course, we're expecting. Um, you can see there's still a couple of planets visible. So um, Jupiter, which has been in the sky for the last six months or so, various different points, is now getting low in the west after sunset. So we usually describe the sky after sunset because that's when most people are going to be seeing it. Uh, so Jupiter will be getting low in the west, and it will be near the other planet that's visible at the moment, which is Venus. So Venus will be probably slightly brighter than Jupiter, and Venus you'll be able to see before it gets really dark over there in the west. Yeah. And um, Jupiter will be the the next brightest thing in the sky, which will be slightly towards the north from there. So you'll be able to see these planets. Great. After sunset. Cool. Do a little bit of stargazing this weekend. I, I think we are expecting some clear skies, so that'll be good. That's good to hear. Yeah. Uh, Dylan, thanks very much, and of course check out the Auckland Stardom Observatory for a whole lot more as well. Um, and Dylan's story.